Before you start working in Excel, you should know the basic parts of the Excel program window so that you can find your way around. In this lesson, you learn to open and save an Excel file and identify Excel window elements. Let's get started. In Step 1, I'll start Excel. On the navigation bar, I'll click Open Other Workbooks. I'll click Computer. Then I'll click Browse. And the Open dialog box opens. In Step 2, I'll navigate to where my data files are stored. That's my flash drive in this Excel Unit A folder. I'll click exa-1.xlsx, then I'll click Open. And the file opens. Now I'll save a copy of this workbook so I can work with it and leave the original one unchanged. In Step 3, I'll click the File tab, then I'll click Save As. Then in Step 4, I'll navigate to the drive and folder where I save my data files. I'm saving my files to my flash drive in this Unit A subfolder, but your location might differ. In the file name text box, I'll type exa dash trip advisor payroll calculator. Then I'll click Save. Now let's examine the program window. First off, below the ribbon, the worksheet window is organized into a grid. There are columns along the top, labeled A, B, C, etc. And there are rows down the side, labeled 1, 2, 3, and so on. The intersection of a column and a row is called a cell. Cells hold the data you enter in Excel. Each one has its own unique cell address, which is determined by the coordinates of the intersecting column and row. For instance, the address of the cell at the intersection of column A and row 1 is cell A1. At the moment, cell A1 also happens to be the active cell. You can tell that because the cell pointer, this dark rectangle, surrounds it. And the address of the active cell appears up here, in the name box. Next to the name box is the formula bar. In this area, you can enter or edit the data in the active cell. Because cell A1 is currently the active cell, the formula bar displays the data contained in cell A1. Below the cells, this Sheet tab displays the name of the current sheet, Sheet 1. By default, an Excel workbook contains only one sheet, but you can add more sheets if you need them. If I click this New Sheet button, Sheet 2 is added. I can then switch between the sheets by clicking the tabs. And these sheet tab scrolling buttons make it easy to navigate when you have many sheets in one workbook. And now I'll just delete this additional sheet. Down here is the status bar, which provides a brief description of the current command or task. On the far left is the mode indicator. It provides additional information about certain tasks. Right now it reads Ready, indicating that we can go ahead and start entering data. At the right are controls for changing your view. And there are scroll bars for scrolling to different parts of the worksheet. In Step 5, I'll click cell A4, and it becomes the active cell. In order to work in a cell, you have to make it active, either by clicking it, as we did here, or by using the arrow keys on your keyboard. In Step 6, I'll click cell B5. I'll press and hold the mouse button. I'll drag to cell B14. Then I'll release the mouse button. That selects all the cells from B5 to B14. A selection of two or more cells, such as B5 through B14, is called a range. You select a range when you want to perform an action on a group of cells at once, such as moving them. Notice also that the status bar displays the average, count, and sum of the selected cells as a quick reference. We'll start working with this worksheet in the next lesson. 
to try these steps yourself and see some additional tips, and to learn about using SkyDrive and web apps, turn to page Excel 4 in your book.